Glory. Amen. Grab your pen, your notebook, your Bible. With your sweet, smart self, you can be seated. And also make sure you have your phone in your hand so we can get to work this evening. <clears throat> Praise God forevermore. Always a joy to come to fellowship and to share the word with you. I believe that there's an army rising all over the world that will do justice to the gospel of Christ in these last days. If you're a witness, can I have a powerful amen? I also believe that God is raising a generation of people all over the world, everywhere. And this truth will not be kept from the body of Christ. The days of malnutrition is over. These are the days when the true realities of what Christ suffered for, the riches of his grace and glory will be made manifest in the body of Christ. All right, so we've been examining Brother Paul's revelation of identification. And we've been looking at in Christ, the signature of the Pauline theology. And we've been looking at the consistency of the Pauline theology with Jesus' theology in tandem with the theology of Moses. If you look at the book of Luke chapter 24, verse 25, when Jesus rose from the dead on the way to Emmaus, he met the disciples, Cleopas, arguably, and the wife. And they were discussing about the events of the past three days. And then Jesus said to them, what are you guys talking about? And they said to Jesus, are you a visitor in town? Jesus turned to them and he said unto them, oh fools and slow of heart to believe. All that the prophets have spoken, the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ, next verse, to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory. Next verse, and beginning at Moses. Now remember, this is post-resurrection. This is after resurrection. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets. He expounded unto them in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. Upon his resurrection, he didn't talk about all of his afterlife experiences. He still stuck to the message of Moses and all the prophets. And he used Moses and all the prophets to teach what happened in his death, burial, and resurrection. That's very instructive. Which means, therefore, that the theology of Jesus was Moses' theology. I'm sure I've said that a million times over. That the theology of Jesus is Moses' theology. In fact, when we began to look at some details, we also saw what Brother Peter said concerning the theology of Paul. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse number 15, and you know that Peter is an apostle of repute. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse number 15, an account that the long suffering of our God is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul according or also according to the wisdom given unto him hath written unto you next verse take note of the word wisdom sophia insight as also in all his epistles speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to be understood which they that are unlearned and unstable rest as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction Unto their own destruction. So Peter gives credence to the writings of Brother Paul. And he calls the Pauline theology, he calls it epistles. As in his epistles. Alright? And if you observe also, we read yesterday that Brother Paul always taught from Moses and the prophets. He said he taught from Moses and the prophets saying none other things other than what Moses and the prophets have said. So we took time to begin to examine the prayer of Jesus in John chapter 17 verse 5. John chapter 17 verse number 5. And now, O oh Father, this is where the lacuna was last night, right? <laughs> and now, O oh Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Somebody say glory. That's the word doxa. With the doxa, the glory. And we looked at a few word study yesterday. And um, I promise to re repeat some words for you today. 
But, you know, uh, I wouldn't do it today. I would do it tomorrow. So what we do is the, the online brethren also, those words that you guys are finding difficult to write out, if you make a list of it for me online, I will know which words you guys have problems with. Then tomorrow we can give you the, the accurate spelling of those words. Time will fail me to begin to be assuming what you may be struggling with. So help do a list and I will give you the words for it tomorrow. Look at Acts chapter 26 verse 20, 22 and see what brother Paul says in Acts 26, 22. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue on to this day, witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things. That's Paul now. Saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come. Paul said the only things I said were the things that Moses and the prophets spoke. When Jesus rose from the dead, beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So there is consistency of theology. There is what? Consistency of theology. We also saw yesterday that the man in Genesis 1, 26 to 28 in the Pauline theology is Paul's demand. There is one mediator between God and man, the man. The man. Let us make man in our own image. The man Christ. So we said that the man in Genesis, the man of Moses, is the man of Paul. And we took time to see that the man in Genesis 1 is Christ. And brother, brother Paul calls him Adam to show you that Paul got his theology from Moses. First Adam, last Adam, second Adam, first Adam of the earth earthy, second Adam, the Lord from heaven. All the Adams were from Moses' theology. The man, one man, Romans chapter 5, by one man sin entered into the world by one man shall man be justified. One man, one man, the man. All of that is the Pauline theology and he got all of that from Moses. He said, I preach what Moses and the prophets preach, saying none other things. Alright, so yesterday we concluded by looking at Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3. Who be in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high and we said that word express image is the greek word character c h a r a k t e r character then we also said brother paul calls jesus the image of god Second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4. The image of God. Hebrews calls him the character. The express image. Which the word character means self-production. That is I am producing myself. The man like God. Not the God like man. The man like God. And I dealt with the man like God in Soteria. I mean in, in Christ's reality season 1. The man like God. All right, that then we also saw that brother Paul takes his man from Moses. So Paul therefore takes his thoughts from Moses. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Second Corinthians 5 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, man in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. This man in Christ is neither male nor female. Is the same will let us make man, let them have dominion. Because the man in Genesis was neither male nor female. The man in Genesis chapter 2 was male and female. Adam and Eve. But the man in Genesis 1 was just man male and female in one if any man in christ the man in christ a new creation and this new creation is neither male nor female 
Galatians chapter 3 verse 28. Look at the way brother Paul establishes this thought. He says, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus, the man. You are all one in Christ Jesus. So there is the man in Christ. What brought, what brought brother Paul to that point of discourse when writing to the church at Corinth? 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 16. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 16. Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh for gospels, yet now henceforth know we him no more resurrection. In the four gospels, we knew him after the flesh incarnation. After the resurrection, we no longer know him after the flesh. So he is now known where? Where is Christ known now? In the new creation. Christ is now known in the new creation. Now look at the word, a man in Christ. A new creation. A man in Christ. A new creation. Is the word, kinetsis. Kinetsis. To spell that word is K-A-I-N-E. Kinek. K-A-I-N-E-K. Let me repeat. K-A-I-N-E-K. T-I-S-I-S. Kinetsis. That's the word for new creation. That word creation is primarily used for God. Primarily, it is used for God. Let's look at something that should trigger our minds to think. Mark 10 verse 5. Mark chapter 10 verse 5. <clears throat> and Jesus answered and said unto them, for the hardness of your heart, he wrote you this precept, verse 6. But from the beginning of the creation, oh boy, this is Jesus speaking. God made them male and female from the beginning of creation. I think this is another way Jesus is teaching about the church. Of course, he is quoting the same person as though that person cont is contradicting himself, but he is actually not contradicting himself. And of course, you will find this quote in Matthew 19, verse 6 to 7. Matthew chapter 19, verse 6 to 7. Male and female created he them. And brother Mark uses this word creature in Mark 16, 15. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Every creature. And the word creature is always used for what God has done. Always is used for what God has done. Therefore, that word creature is a Genesis word. Is a Genesis word. A word generated by the mouth of Moses. Now look at the way brother Paul will now use it in his Sophia. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 30. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 30 to 32. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Next verse. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife. And they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. Now we have established that the church is a family. I bow my knees unto the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. So the church is a family. Remember also, we said Paul's soteriology is along with his ecclesiology. 
All right, we established that at the beginning, which is male and female, meaning male and female in Christ. So in other words, the male and female is found in Christ. That is Christ and his church. Christ and his church. So the question is, could Jesus have been saying that that particular day when he was teaching? Yes, that's what he was saying. In the beginning, your Akai. Now the spelling of Akai is A-K-E-I. Beginning. Male and female are never to be separated. Male and female are never to be separated or segregated in the church. Male and female are never to be separated or segregated in the church or in Christ. Male and female together is God's Adam. God's image in man. God's image in man is not gender sensitive. It's not gender sensitive. Neither is it anti-gender. It's not gender sensitive and it's not anti-gender. Remember, we are using a perennials. A perennials. I can spell it for you now. A poronios, which are the things of heaven. E P O R A N I O U S. A poronios, heavenly language. We are using spiritual reality. So the word thesis, which is the word creation, is used for what God has done. Creation. And you know the spelling of thesis now. K-T-I-S-I-S. -I -S, what God has done. For further study at home, Romans chapter 1 verse 20 and 25. Romans chapter 1 verse 20 and 25. Romans chapter 8 verse 19 to 21. Romans chapter 8 verse 19 to 21 and 39. Every time you see the word creature or creation, you go back to Genesis to see what was created. Man, things, that's a Genesis language. Man, things, God created man, all things were made by him, that's a Genesis language. So if in that writing of 2 Corinthians 5, 17, we have a new creation. The word new is a word used for different. A different creation, an unseen creation, an unused creation. Different, unseen, unused. Different, unseen, unused. Alright, new creation, never seen before unseen, unused. He calls it a new creation. You will also see that in Galatians chapter 6 verse 15. Where that, where, Galatians 6 15, where brother Paul says, for in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creature, a new creation. Now, that Galatians 6 15 is that principle he calls a new creation. Or a new creation can also be referred to as God's man. God's man. Or God's humanity. Stay with me. So we have become in Christ God's human being. Glory to God. We have become in Christ God's human being in his spirit. In Colossians 1.15, which is also the new creation. Colossians 1.15, you can also read Colossians 1.23. He's talking about the new creation. Now, look at the way Brother Paul uses this in Ephesians 2.10. Put that up for me. Ephesians 2.10. 
For we are his workmanship created in. We are his workmanship created in. In Christ Jesus. Where did the creation take place? In Christ Jesus. So the raw materials for the creation, where were they gathered? In Christ Jesus. So that who is the new creation therefore? Hold on. Who is the new creation? Christ. Because if the material used to form the new creation, we are gathered inside Christ. What will the new creation be? Christ. If you be Christ's, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Now watch where you need to pay attention. Which God had before, had before, pros, has before ordained that we should walk in them. So when people talk about the dominion of the fish and the sea, you know where that will be? Dominion of the fish and the sea. Where is that? Genesis. Let them have over fish and, 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 and the sea. It's Moses' figure of speech. It's a mode of communication. Because now he uses trees. Moses uses trees. Serpents. To describe attitudes. Don't miss that. He uses trees, serpents, to describe attitudes or to describe the flesh. So Moses is talking about the spirit over the flesh in Genesis 1, 26 to 28. The spirit over the flesh. Not dominion over earthly things in as much as that is inferred. But Moses is using a spiritual vocabulary to say that the flesh shall be dominated in the dominion of Christ. The flesh shall be dominated in the dominion of Christ. That is why the dominion of Genesis 1.26 never meant to dominate another man. Let them the man in Christ. Let them have dominion collectively over. No man dominates another. Because no male or female. You are one. Male, female in Christ. In Christ, dominion over things. But to dominate things typified in Moses' language is typified as birds, fishes, every moving thing on the earth. In Ephesians 2.10, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. So who are this workmanship? It's God's genesis. It's God's Adam. Which God had before ordained. That we should walk in them. Question. Where did God ordain this? That we should walk in them. Huh? Genesis. Brother Moses. I mean brother Paul. Plays with a word. Poimastizo. Poimastizo. I can spell. P-O-I-E-M-A-S. T-I-Z-O P-O-I-E M-A-S T-I-Z-O Where did this creation happen? Just read chapter 2 again from the resurrection of Jesus. The new man. God's man. He said, just look closely at what happened to Jesus. Just look closely at what happened to Jesus in the resurrection. And you will see a new humanity. Just look at what happened to Jesus in the resurrection. In that resurrection, you will see a new kind of humanity. 
that never existed before the resurrection. So, Moses' prophecy, therefore, has been fulfilled. What was Moses' prophecy? Let us make man in our image. To make man in our image was Moses' prophecy in Genesis 1. Fulfilled in the resurrection of Christ. So God has glorified Jesus with the glory he had. Yeah. Pros cosmos anian. Pros cosmos anian. Before the world. That glory of male and female in the new creation. Who dominates the flesh? Yeah. That glory of male and female in the new creation. Who now has dominion over the flesh? This man is not born of flesh, but born of the spirit. Just like Moses said. So in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 15... You will see, he, he, Brother Paul calls it one new man. One new Ephesians 2.15. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments containing ordinances, for it to make in himself of twin one new man. If your Bible is mine, I will underline that. One new man. So we have one man. We have the man. Okay. Adam. First Adam, second Adam, last Adam. Now we have new creation. Now we have one new man. Glory to God. One new man. Look at Ephesians 4.24. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 24. And that you put on the new man. So add another to the list, the new man. You put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Skisis. Look at Ephesians 3, 9. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 9. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world had been hid in God who did what? created what all things how by Jesus Christ now so that's Genesis 1 26 to 28 we just read in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 9 so Genesis 1 26 to 28 is Moses' prophecy about the resurrection of Jesus let us make man is a prophecy that God will raise Jesus from the dead as a new kind of humanity that male and female doesn't have any demarcation in that man. So Moses' Genesis 1 and 2 is teaching. Moses is teaching by revelation. He is teaching by oral tradition. He is teaching by his own explanation. He is teaching by revelation by oral tradition and by his own explanation. So this dominion is the kingdom in Christ who will subdue all things. The kingdom in Christ will subdue all things and will subdue the last enemy. This is the dominion that we have in Christ. How many of you know that Satan and his demons are products of the flesh. Satan and his demons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they are products of the flesh. And in Colossians 3.10, you will see the same thing Brother Paul has been talking about. Colossians 3.10. And I've put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge, after the image of him that created him. So, the all things were made by him that John said in John 1, 2, and 3. Jesus is the light and life, which is the prophecy of Moses. So, the glory of Hebrews chapter 2, verse 6 to 9, 
now explains the glory of Genesis 1.26. The glory of Hebrews chapter 2 where we read yesterday. What is man that thou art mindful of you made him uh, lower than the angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor. Where it says we, we do not yet see all things put under him but we see Jesus. That glory is the glory of Genesis 1 26 to 28. Male and female. And you will see the writer of Hebrews explains it better. In Hebrews chapter 2 verse 10. The doxa. The doxa that I had with you. For it became him for whom are all things. And by whom are all things. In bringing many sons unto glory. To make the captain of their salvation. Perfect through sufferings. In bringing how many sons. Many sons. Unto glory. So in his resurrection. He brought many sons to glory. That is the glory. Glorify me with the iron motor. Glorify me with the glory that I had with you before the world. Let us make man. That's the glory. And that prophecy will only be fulfilled in the resurrection. Am I communicating at all? So that's the John 17 verse 5. Many sons unto glory. Why sons? Because they now have his own spirit. So in Jesus' prayer, in John 17 verse 5, he is asking for Moses' prophecy to be fulfilled. That's the prayer. Look at this. John 17 verse 5. And now, O oh Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. He is asking for Moses' prophecy to be fulfilled. Look at John 17, 22. John 17, 22. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. Question, where was that oneness? Genesis 1, 26 to 28. Adam, male and female, oneness. One man, not Jew, not Gentile, not Nigerian, not American, not Kenyan, not Australian, not Canadian, not British, or Briton, eh? not Cameroonian, not poor, no class, not rich, but one man. That is the oneness. He says that glory, the glory of sons. Question, where is the glory of sons? Eh? Uh -uh. Where? Uh -uh. What brought about the glory of sons? Resurrection. In the resurrection. That's where the glory of sons is. The spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. And if any man have not the spirit, he is none of his. So the glory of sonship is the resurrection where the spirit has been shed forth. Am I teaching good? So who said this? Who talked about this glory? Moses. Pros cosmos or pros enian or in better words, katabole. Katabole. Who has the vocabulary for katabole? Huh? Uh -uh. Katabole. Paul. Katabole is Paul. Just like you have Apodexis. New Maruak. Katabole for pros and yen or pros cosmos before the world. Yeah? Are you all catching now? Is all the grammar falling in place? <laughs> if after all this thing I'm doing, you are sitting, yeah, go and pray in tongues for one week before you come here. <laughs> Go 
I'm praying tongues for one week. Sit down at home, just with it. For one week. Because it can't be clearer than this. This is the downest. <laughs> Am I communicating at all? <laughs> Somebody shout glory. Can I hear better glory? Don't your neighbor say receive the supply of the spirit. Say receive, 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 receive. Receive understanding. In the name of Jesus. Can I have a powerful amen? So, his seed is sown in gem form in Genesis. The seed of doctrine is sown in gem form in Genesis and explained in the epistles. Let's go further. Can we go further? In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Paul therefore was right to say the first man and the last man. The first man and the last man. Mama and I were having a discourse on that this afternoon. The first man and the last man. Through Adam all died. Through Christ shall all be made alive. The first man and the last man. Genesis 1, let us make man intent. Genesis 2, Adam formed. The man in Genesis 1 is preached to Adam as the tree of life. Adam rejects. Adam falls as a pattern for all those that will reject. Then the second Adam shows up. He dies and he rises. In his resurrection, he rises as the last Adam. You are not following. He died as second Adam. He rose as last Adam. And he rose as the first begotten. So he rose as last and first. First Adam rejected the gospel. Second Adam died to recover the fallen man. And as he, as he rises as last Adam, he becomes the first begotten of the new kind of humanity that is born by the spirit of God. Now, if you're getting that shout, I hear you. Now, stay with me because I'm going somewhere. So, Moses wrote the first two chapters of Genesis as though they had happened before the third chapter. But the point really was that first chapter is the solution to what happened in the third chapter. The first chapter is the solution because God does not hear God pro acts is a solution to the problem that was created. So, Jesus came to be the fulfillment of that as the last Adam. Moses, now listen to his verbiage. He calls the serpent. The serpent. Paul said, that serpent is Satan. And he is not the most scary figure that shows up when there's no light in your room. That serpent is deception. Deception. In 2 Corinthians 11 verse 3, and we're going to read in a few minutes, but just hold on. He is the opponent. He is the one that twists the word of God. Exactly how Moses pointed him. The first word Moses used for the serpent is subtle. The serpent was more subtle. And subtle in his words. So that's why Paul used the serpent to describe false doctrine. <laughs> because so, false doctrine is subtle. Or what we call another gospel. False doctrine or another gospel. Second Corinthians 11 verse 3. 
2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse number 3. You know, we had a very little chat today, this afternoon, uh, with, with, with Pastor Chris on Ayinka. And uh, he told me something that fascinated me and got my attention. He said, uh, Dr. Damina, one preacher in Nigeria, you know, told a friend of mine that you have said that there is no heaven. So, he said that preacher called him and said, Dr. Damina, is preaching that there is no heaven. So he said he didn't say anything to him. He just kept quiet. When the man finished, he said, okay, thank you. You are not saying anything. He said, yeah, because you have not said anything. Thank you. So that preacher went to report him to his friend. So his friend called him and said, this preacher said he spoke to you about Dr. Damina teaching that there's no heaven and you said nothing. He said, yeah, because he didn't say anything. He only said, Dr. Damina said, there is no heaven, no facts, no details. I have nothing to say to that because you know, as I know, that Dr. Damina cannot say there's no heaven. Only that he didn't listen. You, have you listened? He said, no. He said, so we don't have a discussion too. So we're talking and I said to me, Dr. Damina, I said, but I was just preaching it to my church. He said, the monitoring spirits you have online, they are more than angels. So these guys are saying I'm preaching heresy, but they can't stay away from me. Something is pulling them. The more they are saying what I'm preaching is not correct, the more they are saying, let's see what he will say again. Let's see. Let them keep coming. One day, the trap will catch the rat. <laughs> they may be watching now. That's why I'm telling the story so that they can hear that I know that they are watching. <laughs> That thing that is bringing you will catch you. It will catch you. I'm telling you, it's not a prophecy. It's a word of knowledge. It will catch you very quickly. Just be coming. <laughs> you don't believe in what I'm preaching and you are listening. It will catch you. <laughs> it will catch you. From all we have been teaching for close to two weeks now, have we said there is no heaven? It will catch you. <laughs> we have said that religious heaven is fraud. Eh? That heaven at last is calm. Have we said that? Yeah. I think we should do a book on heaven, right? We should do a book like that. Religious heaven is calm. That would be a nice title for the book. Eh? Religious heaven is calm. Find out. Satabala. Jotolo hotada. Pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me. <laughs> Glory. Let's get back. Let's get back. What took me there now? What took me there? Are you still here? Second Corinthians eleven verse three. But I fear. Lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Next verse, pay attention. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit, which we have not received, or another gospel, which you have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. That bear is not English language, it's Bible language. That bear means oppose him. It's not to bear with him. Like I'm bearing. Uh -uh. In the original, it means oppose him. Now, that's exactly what Moses was saying. He brought another message. The serpent brought another message to Eve. That is why when they said they were naked, God told them, who told you? That means them saying they were naked was from an external information that was independent of God. That's why God said, who told you that you are naked? I mean, somebody has been preaching a gospel, a pseudo gospel. 
Somebody has been preaching another gospel and you paid attention till you believed it enough to preach it back to me. Who told you? Another gospel is, a, is the serpent in Eden. Another gospel is that serpent that began Eve in Eden. Another message. Am I teaching here? Another message. So it was another message different from the gospel and different from God's own world. Look at Revelation chapter 12 verse 9 and 10. Revelation 12, 9 and 10. Put it up for me. Revelation chapter 12 verse 9 and verse 10. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. He says he's the accuser of the brethren that accuses us daily. If you know how John wrote, that, that serpent or that deception or that another gospel, John called it a belief system. A belief system or a doctrine. I know one day as we keep teaching this, we will understand what exactly happened in Genesis chapter 3. We are getting close to it. Okay? In Luke chapter 4, Jesus at the temptation meets Satan. And what was the result of that encounter? He came with deception. And then he says, all the kingdoms of this world has been given to me. Talking about the flesh. The kingdoms of this world. The lust of the eyes. The lust of the flesh. The pride of life. All of it is the flesh. If you will worship, I will give it to you. So, he manifests through the flesh. And Jesus said to the devil or the serpent, No, you will only worship the Lord your God and him only will you serve. That's very key because true worship overcomes temptation. True worship overcomes temptation. That's key. Now, so Paul's verbiage, therefore, he explains the answer to the question. What is the answer to the question? God's provision of Christ. That's the answer to the question. Not an afterthought like that, but it's a prostone cosmos. A prostone, pros, prostone cosmos or a catabole. That's exactly what was done. So let's note how Brother Paul writes. So Paul, therefore, will be the advanced teachings of Jesus. Exactly what Jesus was teaching, but in a different way, in a Sophia, an insight or an explanation that Peter will say. An explanation. And some of them, you may need to think, as some of you have been thinking in the past weeks. Remember, these are short hands, right? These are short hands of the writings of Moses. These are short hands of the writings of Isaiah. These are short hands of the writings of another man who beautifully presents them in a way you will read them and conclude. How come I didn't see this? And that man is Paul. You look at the writings of Paul coming alive. Then with that light, you look at the Old Testament. You say, ah, ah. So this is what they were saying and I didn't see it. That's the Sophia. The insight. And that's why Peter will say God gave him wisdom. God gave him an insight. So let's look at a few things. This will help us understand a few things on salvation. Now Paul doesn't use a word that was so used in the Old Testament. And that is the word atonement. Paul never used that word. The word atonement. I'm sure you can spell atonement, right? It's an English word, right? Atonement. <laughs> okay. He doesn't use it at all. 
a place where you likely find that word is in Romans 5. And I think it's the King James people, the King James translators that was trying to be naughty there. They look for a way to push it in there. Look at Romans 5.11. Romans 5.11. And not only so, but with also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. The word atonement there is not in the original. There's no atonement at all. Because the word atonement is an Old Testament word. It's the word kafa. Kafa. Or they call it kippur. Kafa. It's K-A-P-H-E-A-R. Kafa. K-A-P-H-E-A-R. It means to appease or to cover. To appease or to cover. Used for the first time by the same Moses. Genesis 6.14. Can we look at that? Genesis 6.14. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Rooms shall thou make in the ark. And shall pitch it within. And without with pitch. To cover. A covering. Look at Genesis 32.20. Genesis 32 verse 20. Jacob. And say you moreover, behold, thy servant Jacob is behind us. For he said, I will appease him with the present that goeth before me. And afterward, I will see his face. Per adventure, he will accept of me. I will appease him. That word is never used for God. It's never used for God. That's Jacob talking about his brother. He's trying to appease his brother's anger. Now, that term dominates what you call the day of atonement to appease. Look at Leviticus 16.17. Leviticus 16.17. And there shall be no man in the tabernacle of the congregation when he goeth in to make an atonement in the holy place until he come out and have made an atonement for himself and for his household, and for all the congregation of Israel. Alright? That picture seems like God was being appeased. It seems like God was angry. And so, they had to use blood to calm him down like a vampire. Now, before Leviticus 16, Moses used it in Exodus 29.33. You can read at home. Exodus 29.33 and Exodus 29.36. How come Paul doesn't use this word at all in his theology? Let me add one more. Neither did Jesus use the word atonement. Paul never used it and Jesus never used it. To appease someone. I can tell you no doubt. That because of the idolatry prevalent in Egypt. And around Moses. He borrowed these words to use. Okay. But these words don't explain God's character at all. They do not explain the character of God at all. Look at that Romans 5.11 again. Pay attention. Romans 5.11. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Where atonement was used wrongly, it should be the word cartilage. Cartilage. K-A-T-A. L-L-E-G-E -E, which you will find in Romans 11.15 Catholic which you will find in Romans 11.15 and beautifully let's read this one 2 Corinthians 5.19 Catholic 2 Corinthians 5.19 to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself it was God himself Taking the action to reconcile the world, not imputing their trespasses unto them, 
and had committed unto us the word of reconciliation. So it was God taking the action to reconcile. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. In cartilage, it happens that it is God going towards the man who has done wrong. It is not man going towards God. Man has done wrong. Man is hiding for the wrong he is done. God takes the step and is going towards the man that has done wrong. God was in Christ reconciling the world. You know that Romans chapter 10 again, God uses the word, I mean, Paul uses the word Catholic in the offering of, of, of the son, in the offering of Jesus. And cartilage is the exact opposite of atonement. The exact opposite. It seems like while in Kafir, God was appeased and wrongly so. Because in Kafir, that's self-righteousness. In Kafir, that's man's effort. And you know, Moses helped them to dwell in that. Moses helped them very well. Do this, do this, do this, and they got busy dwelling in Kafar. But in the reconciliation, it is man that is satisfied. It is man that is appeased. See, in reconciliation, if you did me wrong, you did me wrong, and I want us to reconcile, I take the step to appease you. Because when there is a wrong between two people, huh, every one of them is playing the blame game. If you didn't do like this, I wouldn't have done like this. It is because you did like this that I did like this. So God now says, okay, the woman you gave me. When I was alone here, was there any problem? Did I ask you for a wife? Is it not you that says you have wife? The wife you gave me, blame game. So since man is blaming God for his failure, so God takes the step to appease man. You are not understanding. God took the step to appease man, which is the exact opposite of atonement. God takes the step to satisfy man. Remember I said, notice, why didn't Jesus, remember I said it when I started this teaching, why didn't Jesus choose the day of atonement to die? It would have been the wrong message. Rather, he chose the Passover. He didn't die on atonement, he died on the Passover to communicate the right message. Not the day to appease, but the day to bear the pains of others. Now, and that was the example he used. The question now will be, is the atonement explainable today? Yes. But with the explanation of the Passover and the resurrection of Jesus. We can explain the atonement today with the explanation of the Passover and the resurrection of Jesus. And if you want details on this, get Soteria season 4 and Soteria season 6. That gives you 70 hours of teaching. That opens up all of these. Now, so the verb of that word catalage is the word catalasso. How many of you remember catalasso? Catalasso is spelled as K-A-T-A-L-L-A-S-O. Catalasso. It is the meeting of people at a point where you put value on the other person. The meeting of people at a point where you put value on the other person. Romans 5.10. Oh, glory to God. Observe this. Romans chapter 5 verse 10. For if when we were enemies, 
We were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Much more. Be reconciled. We shall be saved by his life. As enemies, God appeased us. God satisfied us and brought us to himself. To appease. So, God's meeting point is the value he gives to us. Katalasu. Catholic. Words of value and words of valuation. Words of value and words of valuation. So Paul therefore begins to use words of balancing imbalances. The Sophia. He begins to use words of balancing imbalances. What does Paul do? In an atonement, this is God, this is man. Man keeps bringing offering every year to calm God down. In atonement, God is just standing and shouting, I am angry. I am angry. I will do something. Calm me down before I move. Calm me down. I am angry. So man brings blood. God sees blood. Yeah. I'm coming down. I'm coming down. I'm coming down. Then after the atonement is over, God begins to rake again. I'm angry. I'm angry. Cool me down. Cool me down. That's why even the songwriters will write, The wrath of God was satisfied. But it wasn't the wrath of God. And they got that from the concept of atonement. But when you look at the verbiage that brother Paul used to explain that atonement using the Passover, he used the verbiage of katalaso, catalage. God wasn't the one angry. Man was the one angry that God didn't stop Satan from tempting him. Man was the one angry that God created an environment that made it easy for him to sin. And then God is punishing him. So God takes a step to satisfy man, appease man, bring man to himself. Katalaso. Am I teaching good? If I'm teaching good, can I have a powerful amen? So now, in the Catalasso, God evens the man by becoming flesh. So that means, as it were, he devalued himself to value man. I'm rounding off. God devalued himself to value man. You're not getting this. Are you getting this? God devalues himself to value man. So, Brother Paul uses a term that is used by those who buy and sell. Bring me what is of this catalasso. How can I reconcile what you owe me with what you have? This is what you have. This is what you owe me. How can I reconcile what you owe me? He uses market language for buying and selling. Bring the exact value. Bring me what is available. Then he brings it. So God says, this is me seen in man. I will provide it. God says, I God, I become man to provide the animal that appeases man. He becomes that provision. Is that not the lesson that Abraham was teaching Isaac? I see the wood. I see the fire. Where is the lamb? 
and Abraham being a good student of the teaching of God's word said the Lord shall provide himself. That is on the mount the provision is waiting. To make the message sink in more into Isaac, he takes Isaac, puts on the altar, and a voice came out of heaven. That is not the animal. He is the one to be appeased. Take him down. There's an animal provided by God himself to appease man. Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the earth. Katalasso. Am I teaching good? Now, I'm closing this. But before I close, hold on. It's a reconciliation. It's more than an atonement. So Paul does not use kafa or kippur. It has no single Greek word because Jesus didn't say it. That word doesn't have any Greek word. Why would he say it? Because if Jesus had used kafa or kippur, he would have contradicted everything God said about him. Because he said he came to die for their sins. So since he is the one that came to die for our sins, he cannot be the same person that is angry. Teaching good? The person who came to die to reconcile you cannot be the one that is angry. For him to reconcile you, he must be kind. So Paul's letters were not to create an easy believism of Christianity. He is teaching what Jesus did. He is teaching what Jesus did for us. While we were enemies, God reconciled us. Having reconciled us, we shall be saved by his life. Glory to God. At no point was God angry. That's what I said a few years ago and somebody said, Dr. Damina is a heretic. He said the Bible said God is angry with a sinner every day. He's there in one of the prophets. But that too has to be explained. God cannot be the one angry and be the one coming to die. If that is anger, it's a good anger. Isn't it a good anger? You're the one angry. Then you now decide to die. That's a good anger. He died to reconcile us. Now, we're going to see the way brother Paul and Jesus and Moses explain these terms as we continue our study tomorrow. But are you blessed tonight? God took the step. Who took the step? God made the offer. Who made the offer? God died the death. Who died the death? That can be the person angry. So tomorrow we shall find out who was angry. Who was angry that God had to calm him down? Who is the Dracula in this matter? Looking for blood. Give me blood. I want blood. Then they give him blood. He will point his mouth. Blood. Vampire God. Not the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's altogether lovely. He's altogether beautiful. Always loving and always caring. He is full of kindness. Oh glory to God. Get on your feet tonight friends. Get on your feet tonight friends. Get on your feet tonight. Glory to God. 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 If you're growing, shout, I'm growing. I'm learning. Sound me very loud. Revelation is increasing. Every day. I didn't hear a powerful amen. Lift your two hands. Let's give thanks to God for all of his matchless, all of his unspeakable grace in our lives. Lift your hands. Let's begin to pray. 
Begin to thank God for his mercy, his grace. Begin to thank God for his love. Begin to thank God for his kindness, his faithfulness. Begin to thank God for the assurance of salvation, the forgiveness of sins. Go ahead. I'm not hearing your voices. Lift up your voice and begin to thank him. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Begin to thank him. Jantoke Bataya Randoze Gebrandoza Bada Ele Brando Shakata Labaya E Gebobo Shanta Labada E Gebranda Jagarate Kea E Parato Zogoro Toze E Le Babanto Lobo Shakatanama E Kebando Doza Galate Kebaya E Kabaranda Dogo Jogoya E Kebrando Sakalata E Kebabalato Shokoloto E Kebranda Zaglatanda Labaya E brando sabarate ke baya e le brando shakalataya e ke babalata kabrada e ke brando sabratana ma e la barate ke bada and the brando sabrata and the leboroto shokoroto e ke brando salate ke baya e ke brando shabarate ke in ke brando sokoroto do e ke brando shakarate ke tana man brando sababanto lo bocha e ke babando lo bocha kata e la babalando soto lo bo e ke babada do do jogodo e ke brando sakalata baya. In Kebrados, in Kebandos, Kabalate, Mambalato, Chocolate, Abaya, Babarante, Kebambalatoko, and 